6 to 9 a.m. All right, 6 uh, to 9 a.m. It's our breakfast. A very, very good morning. Thank you so much for switching us on this morning. It's an absolute treat uh, to have you along. Now, um, spotted something really interesting. Uh, given the high cost of allergy and asthma medications, uh, local researchers from UCT are now examining the extent to which rooibos tea can maybe provide relief for those plagued uh, by nasal allergies. Uh, there is a study that they're looking to conduct, and uh, they're looking for some test subjects, uh, people who can stick their hands up and say, yeah, that's me, that's me. Uh, I, I battle nasal allergies. Uh, I've got uh, Professor Johnny Peter, who's joining us, head of, uh, I, I always trip up on this word, um, he's head of, well, I suppose, <laughs> allergies and immunology. What is it? Allergology. That's right. That's right. Yeah, there we I go. Allergies. Yeah, there we go. Allergies and immunology at UCT's Lung Institute. Prof, thanks so much for your time. Uh, we're live on uh, on social media, by the way, Facebook and YouTube, if uh, you want to watch along. Uh, rooibos tea and nasal allergies. I mean, just that, how, how did uh, how did that even come about as a concept? So actually, it's funny because you know, well, firstly, to say like you know, as a scientist, you've got to have a few uh, interests that are a little bit uh, unique. I think. Uh, and also not so heavy, like at the moment we're dealing with COVID-19, it's been uh, yeah. you know, very depressing. So so for me, um, actually this came about when I had my first, my youngest child uh, had some seborrheic dermatitis, which is another kind of inflammatory condition. And the baby, the, the lady at the baby clinic told me, or told my wife, let's put some, take some rooibos tea bags and stick it on the on the rash and that should help it. Um, and it actually did make a small difference. And it got me thinking, wow, like, let me look at this. Let me let me uh, investigate this. So I read up the data and, and you know, like so many of these um, molecules, like, you know, there's a lot of been a lot of discussion, sort of supplements and uh, alternative uh, methods. There's always quite good, some, some interesting lab data, like, you know, they've taken cells and looked at how the effects could happen in the lab, but very little clinical data. And that's where often things fall short, you know, so... Uh, and then what we decided to do was essentially do our own lab data. So we took some uh, cells from allergy subjects, people that are allergic to the commonest thing, which is house dust mite. So most of the time, nasal symptoms are caused by house dust mite. We took some of those patient cells. We threw some different concentrations of uh, rooibos tea on. And lo and behold, we noted that actually the allergic response of those cells was damped down. So that got us thinking, well, maybe actually we're onto something here. Um, and so this is why we've decided now the next thing we have to do is now get proper, good clinical evidence. So we need to move out of the lab and we need to move into people and actually check whether, in fact, you know, can we can you drink enough rooibos tea in the day to actually damp down your allergies? Or the other thing we want to do is see whether we can actually squirt uh, like a, a tea concentration together mixed with a sort of salt water up your nose. A lot of people do that for allergies, a sort of douching, whether we can do yeah. that, and whether that will make a difference. So those are the two trials that we're about to kick off. So it's quite exciting. All right. And uh, you, you obviously are looking for test subjects. What, what, what kind of candidates are you hoping will stick their hands up and say, yeah, try this with me, please? Yeah. So firstly, we're looking for adults. Uh, so over 18, you need to be an adult. Uh, the second thing is you need to have a history of allergic rhinitis. So this has got to be a problem for you. Unfortunately, that's obviously very common in South Africa. And then secondly, we will, um, I mean, if you want, we will test you. But uh, if you, you may already know that you're allergic to house dust mite. So the, the um, you know, you need to actually have uh, house dust mite sense, what we call sensitivity. So that needs to be a problem for you because part of the way we will study this is we will actually put house dust mite up somebody's nose and then we will observe the symptoms that they experience and we've mm -hmm. got particular scales that allow us to you know kind of check this and then that allows us to assess whether if we add rooibos or you're drinking rooibos or you know what is going on actually to those symptoms so it's about as objective as you can be uh with this whole process all right, rooibos as a concept is coming uh, is coming into its own. It's 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 become a, a little show of superstar uh, in, in the last decade, decade and a half. Uh, I'm I'm seeing so many more rooibos lotions, for instance, and soaps and and shampoos and supplements. It's almost as if uh, you know people in in the scientific realm are now discovering uh, either restorative or, or medicinal properties of of something that that is intrinsically ours here in the Western Cape. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's why, you know, somebody, you know, that South African scientists are particularly interested in it. So there's a whole branch of sort of rooibos uh, research. And in fact, they're the, you know, they're, they're in the they're in the kind of advanced stages of developing a sort of medicinal, like actually a pill that is extracted from rooibos to treat uh, pre-diabetes. Uh, and it's also got some applications, people believe, to uh, da- you know, preventing cancer because a lot of the molecules have antioxidant properties. Uh, mm-hmm. So believe it or not, like we have a, what you can do is you can take rooibos and you can look at it like with special techniques and you actually find that there's a whole lot of things in rooibos. So there's about, you know, 15 or 16 things we can measure that have different properties. So some are kind of antioxidants. Um, there are a couple of molecules which we call bioflavonoids. And those molecules um, we think are particularly important for allergy. So it's actually what's interesting about it is that it's a sort of it's a composite of all these different molecules. And some might be relevant for one kind of condition. Another might be relevant for for you know what we're interested. So so that's probably I think why you're seeing uh, you know a host of researchers be interested in this. And you know we for a long time I mean that's the the funny part is that people feel feel that doctors and uh, you know alternative practitioners are often uh, polarized but that's actually not true and some of the best medicines we have developed have actually come from uh, you know natural herbs plants and things like that so um, what we really all about though is essentially taking this kind of uh, preliminary data and seeing now actually can we make it something that really actually helps people or treats people effectively yeah and and i suppose as as you've pointed out it's 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 about taking that that sort of observational or anecdotal evidence uh, and subjecting it to the the rigor of clinical trial because that's that's what you as scientists uh, need to do to be able to vouch for the efficacy of uh, of what you're prescribing all right um people already i mean i'm i'm seeing people saying please choose me for the trial i'm i'm looking at some of the comments uh, coming through on social media following uh, a conversation there tracy saying me 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 please uh, and three surgeries already to remove sinus polyps, no sense of smell at all, and sneezing fits throughout the year. People like Tracy, what, what do they do to be part of this trial? Um, so they can just drop us uh, an email or a call. So we are based at the UCT Lung Institute. So um, our um, call line there, you know, to book an appointment and get your name on the list for this trial is 021 406 6889, or you could drop um, our practice manager, Nushfa Jardine, that's N-O-E-J-F-A-H dot Jardine, J-A-R-D-I-E-N at U-C-T dot A-C dot Z-A. So if you contact those two routes, the trial probably, we, we're still in the final stages of getting one or two things together. So we probably look to kick off the trial uh, maybe in early November. We also hope to get out of the, the COVID third wave. So you know, we've got a few other pressing priorities we have to deal with, sadly. All right. That number again, 0214066889. We've got it up on the screen if you're following us uh, on the social media. Um, but uh, we'll stick that on uh, our various platforms in any case uh, once this interview is done. Uh, and, and I suppose, Doc, uh, Professor, now, now that people have, have heard rooibos tea and it can help in allergies, I'm, I'm imagining everybody's going to run out uh, to their local supermarket and, and stock up on tea. I mean, this this is not a, a surefire cure. You know, you're, you're trying to draw the link. And, and, and yes, yes the part that that people need to understand it's uh, you know the, the the benefits that you're hoping to prove um and 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 almost dosages that 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 you're hoping uh, almost to be able to determine still need to come off the back of clinical trial it's it's not as if you suddenly sort of clap two or three cups of rooibos tea every day that your allergies are are suddenly going to disappear i mean that's not what you're saying right yeah, that, I mean, I think that's a very important message to come across. I mean, what we are unsure about, especially with the drinking, I mean, we 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 are unsure whether people will physically be able to drink enough rooibos to actually have any yeah. difference. So exactly what you're saying about the dose. You know, you might have to drink 25 cups of rooibos a day, and that might just not be practical. Um, and then the second thing is that, you know, some of the effects we see when you when you work in a lab, you actually directly introducing the tea to the cells in a in a like a petri dish, and the point mm-hmm. is that's one of the reasons why we want to try the the nasal application route because it might be one of these things that you can actually only put your put the rooibos onto the cells in your in your in your nose to have any effect. 
when you drink it, it might get absorbed. And by the time it gets anywhere near that tissue, it might not work at all. So, so I mean, I really think that sure. isn't very important for listeners. And I think, you know, I mean, you know, to bring up the COVID epidemic uh, as well, I mean, we've seen a lot of medic a lot of uh, molecules that looked good in a lab just really fall completely flat when put into clinical trials. So I think this is a critical a bit and i think listeners yeah they shouldn't expect to be able to rush out now and grab a bunch of tea and uh, and and have themselves cured they still are and i mean i i urge listeners too that if they do suffer with nasal allergies to do two things the one is to keep an idea we are coming into the season now so it's about to be pollen season in fact we've just seen the uh, tree pollen for cypress pollen start to spike um, and so listeners in Cape Town should check out our website that we post the weekly counts for the pollen counts, which is uh, www.pollencount.co.za. So they can keep an idea of what they are suffering. And then there are other well-recognized treatments for allergic rhinitis. So intranasal steroid, uh, antihistamines, these are treatments that, that people should be encouraged to you know, get from their practitioners or a lot of them you can actually get over the counter. So I think awareness uh, and, and then, you know, these treatments, and then hopefully we will discover something down the line. All right, Professor uh, Johnny Peter, once again, thanks so much for your time this morning. Very valuable info uh, that you've passed on to all of us. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you, Aiden. Have a good day. Top class. There we go. All the details on, um, in fact, I mean, uh, they're on uh, the, the live social media post we're busy doing. Uh, otherwise, if uh, you are in the car or, or maybe if you're not on your phone, your tablet, your computer, you can go back and check it out uh, at your leisure. It's a couple of minutes away now from seven o'clock.